going to talk about a particular case that we just completed with Dr. Towell. He flew into town and met the patient. The patient's a local patient, so that was kind of fun. It's actually a patient that we did uh, chrome on about right. two years ago. Poor guy's been in a temporary ever since. Yep. It's, it's rough, actually. It's, it's about the ugliest. The intaglio <laughs> is it? Or maybe the whole thing. The whole thing. The intaglio. <laughs> It's not so nice looking. I mean, it's basically... It was he, nice when we first made it, but yeah. after two years, it's taken a toll. Yeah. And he had uh, originally seven implants, I believe, lost one, added another two, so now he's at eight implants. Correct. I think he might have nine in his mouth. Nine, but, total, yeah. nine but, yeah. but eight that we, uh, that we created a restoration for, and that was all through uh, photogrammetry and grammetry records. And we did both because we like to compare them because we're kind of you know right at the right at the, the crest or the beginning of all this uh, grammatry stuff. He came in today, had a really nice seating. We'll show some pictures of that. It was just a beautiful restoration, went in smoothly. It was a Nobel for Sarah Bridge, coping free, model coping free, free, articulation no free. Yeah, which is probably I think our twelfth or something mm -hmm. like that. They go in. They pretty much all go in. They really are nicely, and you don't have that uh, fear of the tie base caps coming out. You also lose the fear of the channels because these channels all have metal in them and then whenever and glue. the structure breaks, it's usually breaking by that cylinder. Yeah. Um, and you have the same problem with the adhesive, yeah, the yeah. debonding over time. I've met many people that told me, oh, I have no problems with them. I've been doing them for 10 years. So give it 10 more years and right. let's see how good that cement holds up. Yeah, that's so, the weakest spot. Yep. Yeah. We've been trying to eliminate that for a long time and we've successfully done that. Uh, quite well and be able to do it quickly too. Now the turnaround time is just a matter of a visit or two, whereas beforehand it was taking several visits. Yeah, our usual hang up is, and not, not to pick on Procera at all, but usually the hang up is getting through their process. They have extremely low, is that the right, low tolerance? Is yeah. that the right word? Yeah. Extremely low, low tolerance, tolerance, not high tolerance yeah. for their zirconias, it's like three microns. And so sometimes these bridges fail through their process and they redo it, but the accuracy is incredible. We've made uh, two hundred, like 250 cases this year, and it's the best. Uh, we, maybe someday we'll mill these in-house, but right now their machines are doing as about as good yeah, as I, mean, I think their, their tolerances are higher, way higher than FDA standards. Yeah, so they're, or, or uh, sorry, lower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds better the opposite. I know that's right. But yes, yeah. They're 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 required to do five, and they right. don't pass until it's at three, and they have this special kind of device to measure it. It's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much don't have to worry when one of their cases comes through the lab that we design. So I thought maybe we could go through this case. This is the patient. Uh, he um, he he left about two hours ago, about as happy as can be. And let's just, we're going to peel back the onion of the records. Uh, the aqua here is the uh, iOS scan of the prosthesis with the, uh, the iJig analogs Correct. on it extra orally. Correct. So we took the temporaries out of the mouth. We put in scan analogs in the reverse fashion. Normally we take scan bodies and put them on top of, of implants. This is the opposite. We follow the iJig pattern where we take out the temporaries, screw in these sandblasted, uh, analogs and then we capture that all around the mouth if you have a lab scanner even easier pop it in the lab scanner right and capture it that way right so it, it would look like this these are these are the digital versions of it but dr. Tao will just screw one of these in without the purple obviously but yeah this, without the purple uh, the blue with the blue. like like this yep. like that and uh, and this is scanned in your fingers and then while it's uh, while it's out of the mouth it'll also scan the tissue and the multi-unit abutments, just no healing collars or scan bodies, just tissue and MUAs, and we bring it back in. Uh, and actually, you scan the with the Medit, correct? Which allows you to continually so, stack. The, what's one of the beautiful things about Medit is that you can stage, you can keep adding additional scans, and you can bring in scans from the past. So I can bring in the initial uh, 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 diagnostic wax-up scans, or right. I can bring in the original models that we had initially started with the patient. Yeah. So that's the beauty of that and started that out as a pre-op, then take updated scans and keep moving forward. So we can just keep stacking scan on top of scan. Mm -hmm. And then especially when you go into pre-op mode, it'll have that scan and then you, it automatically just erases uh, the, the section that you, now you want to pick up, which would be, let's say, the multi-unit abutment. So if oh. you had teeth in the mouth, which is like this case where we scan the teeth with the tissue, then we take everything out of the mouth and we can scan the actual prosthetic with the actual uh, analogs on them and compare to that, then you can see where that tissue level is at compared to where the teeth margins are. So we know where we need to fill in certain gaps. In fact, why don't I, um, 
I'll show that because that's part of our program here. These are the records. This is this is the prosthesis outside the mouth with the scan bodies on it. While it's out, you scan the tissue in the multi-units, and then you put it back in, and you scan the opposing, scan the bite. That's the collection of records. You can also scan it before in the mouth too to, to do the bite, but usually outside the mouth. And then the, yeah. and the new addition. <laughs> What's the, that? The new addition, we added the grammetry to it. Um, you can even include photogrammetry records into the Medit software as well uh, to upload as an attachment but we've added the OptiSplint itself. Uh, this is the, the grammetry um, which we use for this case to, on, on all eight implants to be able to, um, compete, to do an analysis comparing photogrammetry to actual grammetry to see how well we can make this prosthesis and see if there's any differences between the structures. So that, this is the prosthesis that we made. Actually, one of the I always like to show this off with your cases because they are Put the screw channels in here. They're they're all planned. And this is all from either either guided smile or some kind of uh, you know we also use a combi guide metallic guide to put the implants in the right place to set it up for success. This was an FP1 um, chrome guided smile case, and we did this case actually through the tissue without having to do a big flap. We did very minimal flap on this case, right. which is a great way to be able to keep the tissue if you're looking to do an FP1 restoration. So let's just, for the fun of it, we'll show, let me explain the two different sets here. The, the green are the analogs from ICAM, and the white is the, uh, the, the, the scan from the grammetry. So that we're, we're meshing the two together to see how close they are together. And so if you, you um, are, are seeing how close these are, you almost can't tell a difference. There's a little bit of a discrepancy right here, this little bit of a, nope. not, not this outside here, but this little white line, yellow line here, and the rest of them, you can go around and, and inspect them very closely. You can see a little bit here, a little discrepancy here and here. And let, me, let me just mention that the discrepancy back here was because... <laughs> well, while I was scanning, <laughs> in the mouth, we have a great version of this, but then we did an extra world for comparison, and while I was scanning, I didn't, ha I didn't have enough composite material, enough stellar material wrapped around and it broke off so I reluted it back together for just you know photo purposes and things like yeah. that to capture. Pretty good but movie. then we said let's scan it and see the difference and you can see it's just a minor graph and that's on something that I re-glued back together outside the mouth. If you scroll around the rest you're going to see that there's literally direct adaptation of the gravimetry to the photogrammetry. Yeah, it's, that, it's, it's impressive. Yep. It is. And then this was an intraoral scan. Mm -hmm. So the, the new modality is taking the OptiSplint out, scanning it on the bench from a lab scanner, but this was in the mouth scan, and that's how accurate it was compared to mm -hmm. photogrammetry. So very impressive. And then, and then to deliver a final zirconia with no copings, because right. you, you can't get more accurate than that. No. When you put a coping in, and you have a person who puts glue inside with all the copings, and then you just kind of put it together the model and you cure it, I mean, that tells you if there's any fudge factor, it's taken up in the cement. Correct. You have zero fudge factor here. Okay. It has to be perfect. And they always wonder why these, these um, little caps come out. And it, it's a lot of the times because the, the adhesive is not so strong and the screw ends up bind, get, allowing it to pass through. You grab a little bit, but the screw's not down all the way. Right. And you can't really see that. You can see that in a temporary, in a PMMA. But you can't really see that through the zirconia very well at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. If you take a 3D, maybe, if you take a CBC, maybe, if you have metal artifact reductive tools, maybe you can analyze that. But really, that's the stuff that we miss on our finals, yeah. unfortunately. And then yeah. we go, and time goes by, and we have separation. So perhaps we could still use, we don't have to go metal-free on a lot of these cases. It's just nice knowing that there's nothing, no intermediary structures that we have to worry about and that may be affecting our long-term fit for these patients and reduce the amount of headaches that they can cause. That's funny because now I know why you asked for this for so long. <laughs> we couldn't make it and then now we can. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, one of those game changers that uh, you just really don't have to deal with so many more headaches. We spoke about the, in other videos that we put together about fracturing, where, where do things fracture? Right. And they always seem to fracture by the screw channel because there's always right. that large metal that needs to be 
right. um, uh, incorporated into the structure. You have to have a bigger hole for cement bigger and hole. metal, and now you have to and have less. now it's much smaller. So if yeah. we can reduce that size uh, and we can get good passivity on our appliances, on our final restorations, then our long-term success should lead us to getting even longer-term <laughs> success, which I think is the ultimate goal for everyone, because nobody likes to make remakes. They're not profitable, they're not enjoyable, and when we can go from from scanning of impressioning to going direct to final, or maybe a printed trying if you so desire, and then to final, our profitability goes up. Less remakes is a beautiful thing. Now the office can uh, function well and not have to suffer with some of those consequences that may occur long term from some of these prosthetics that have to do all these extra steps where intermediary factors come in and cause other complications down the road. Mm. Okay, good. Uh, that is, that's, that's a nice workflow from a planned case with uh, the, uh, what we think is the best technology, the best mm -hmm. guided technology, and then that was two years ago, and look how far we are now. We can finish them up with digital workflows. So thank you for that. My pleasure. Nice summary.